Okay, hi there, welcome to a macro video. Uh, we're going to spend a few minutes in this short revision video thinking about an important concept in the global financial system, namely inflows and outflows of hot money. So hot money is, is an inflow often of short term, very short term foreign exchange reserves, dollars, yen, pounds, etc. And those inflows are not related to either exports of goods and services or uh, kind of long term foreign direct investment flows. So hot money is basically uh, money or financial capital that moves very, very freely and quickly around the world looking to earn the best rate of return. Hot money is a good example of the incentive function of the price mechanism. Just developing this definition, hot money can be invested in any financial asset whose value is expected to go up including property and shares, or simply you're buying the currency and putting money into a commercial bank account of a currency offering the best post-tax rate of interest. We might actually improve this definition to say that hot money is seeking the best risk-adjusted rate of return or profit. Part of it, of course, is linked to the huge daily turnover in foreign exchange markets as investors look to put their money, their hot money, in a currency whose value they think will go up and where the rate of interest on, on short-term savings deposits is best. The average daily turnover in the global foreign exchange markets has been climbing. It's over $6.5 trillion per day in 2019. That figure presumably have gone up since. And hot money is often used to describe the money invested in currency markets, often dominated by, by speculators. Well, consider this diagram, which shows short term interest rates for a selection of countries from 2011 through to 2019. Now, in some regions, including the, the euro area, the 19 countries that share a common currency, the euro, uh, short short interest rates have nudged into negative territory and they've been close to zero for nearly 20 years in Japan, whereas relative interest rates have been higher in Australia, especially when their country was booming a decade ago, and also in the United States when the Federal Reserve started raising monetary policy interest rates prior to the onset of the, the COVID-19 pandemic. And you'll see here, of course, the obvious contrast is that interest rates in Russia are much, much higher than, for example, in Japan, <clears throat> the UK and, and the euro area. So there are quite big differences in interest rates around the world. And that's one of the factors, but only one of the factors that drives hot money flows. At A-level uh, and IB economics, most students use the concept of hot money when analysing some of the causes of appreciations or depreciations of the exchange rate. So here's a quick explanation of that, a chain of reasoning. So let's assume, for example, the central bank raises their base interest rate and commercial banks in that country follow suit by increasing their own interest rates, including the rate of interest offered to people putting money on savings deposit. While that generates a better real percentage return for savers, and in theory, this then, in a world where capital can move freely, this then generates an inflow of hot money from overseas. And as people are moving their money from one country to another, that money flowing into a commercial bank from overseas increases the demand for a nation's currency. So you, you get paid interest on the, on, the, on the currency deposits of that particular country. And if the demand for a country's currency goes up, that can cause a currency appreciation. So what we're we saying is that the contraction in monetary policy can lead to an appreciation of the exchange rate because of the impact of new net hot money flows. And of course, increased capital mobility around the world in many countries makes it easier to transfer money across accounts, across national borders. Money can be moved from one account to another with ease and very low cost. So if there's a rise in relative interest rates, relative interest rates that can lead to a net inflow of, uh, of hot money as people look to maximize the return on their investment. Well, uh, why is hot money significant for a country as a economy? Let's think about uh, some of this sort of assess the significance. What we're trying to do is basically try and calibrate the potential significance of big hot money flows for a country. 
First point, I'm now going to make four points. One is that it, it might actually help a central bank to influence a currency in a managed floating system. We know that many countries are now moving towards managed floating currencies where changes in interest rates in part are designed to bring about changes in hot money flows and that can then move the exchange rate in one direction or another. Second significance is that hot money flows coming into a commercial bank can provide funds. In a sense, those deposits can then be lent out to finance, for example, business investment. So hot money inflows, particularly for low and middle income countries, can perhaps overcome a savings gap, uh, which could, uh, could be a factor holding back growth and development. On the other hand, hot money flows generating an increase in the domestic money supply can create excess liquidity in an economy. Money is piling into shares and things, and perhaps property, that can perhaps stoke a, a, an asset boom, which is unsustainable for a country. And the fourth key point, I think, in terms of significance, is that if you're, as a country, if you're exposed to hot money flows, well, those hot money flows can be volatile. So first of all, they can amplify, they can ex exaggerate exchange rate movements. And, you know, a big change in the exchange rate then has a direct impact on some of the components of demand. So hot money flows driving into a country, causing the exchange rate to appreciate, might then make parts of your manufacturing sector less competitive in overseas markets, for example. Um, and secondly, and this is a crucial point, hot money can become cold money. So hot money is volatile, it's footloose, and it can often move out of a country pretty quickly, making the exchange rate more volatile, especially when hot money becomes cold money. So one of the big questions, I suppose, here is the extent to which a country whose financial system is open to inflows and outflows of hot money is, is potentially less economically stable. Finish off with this question. Are hot money inflows inevitable for a country with relatively high interest rates? It's an interesting question to ask. <clears throat> the interest rate, for example, in this chart, I think is quite interesting. Pardon the pun. Uh, the interest rate on the one year fixed deposits, you, you have to put your money in a savings account for at least one year to get this return. And a selection of countries here. Uh, and the interest rates on these deposits are much higher, way higher than you could get in a commercial bank in countries such as the UK and the United States. Now, in theory, uh, an attractive venue, Turkey, 17% interest rates, Uzbekistan, 20%, Argentina, over 50%. These are generous, in theory, generous nominal interest rates on one-year deposits. An attractive venue, perhaps, for speculative hot money flows. But, of course, we know there are big risks in moving money, if you can, into these countries. So pause the, pause the button here for a second if you're watching this on replay. What, what are some of the risks of, if you're an investor, of sending hot money to these countries in pursuit of a short-term profit? Can you think of two risks? Let me suggest three for you. There may well be more. The first is currency risk. Uh, so you're saving in Turkish lira or whatever it is, the Argentinian peso. Uh, the Vietnam Dong or the Indian Rupee. But the risk is that uh, the currency could depreciate or devalue and you could lose money. And a great example of that, of course, is the recent devaluation of the Turkish lira on the back of the the uh, sacking of the, of the Turkish Central Bank's chief um, by President Erdogan. Turkish lira fell, I think, something like 13 to 15 percent pretty much in a matter of minutes. So there's currency risk. The second risk is harder to calibrate, but it's there and it's political risk. The government, for example, might suddenly impose capital control so you can't move your money out of a country without risk of loss. Or they might impose a tax, a special tax, on foreign savings deposits, which brings down your return. So some sort of arbitrary political intervention increases the risk. And the third risk is the more wide, widespread generic uh, market risk. So these countries have more volatile economic cycles and asset prices, and therefore putting money into this country, even if it's in the short term, it exposes you to a much greater degree of economic or market, market risk. So although the interest rates on these accounts appear superficially very attractive, 
Of course, many of these countries have high inflation, uh, volatile political uh, outlooks and volatile currencies. So it's by no means certain that hot money would flow into these countries on the back of just uh, a high nominal rate of interest. Well, there we go. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed this quick overview of the concept of hot money and hopefully feel confident about using it when the opportunity arises in your economics assessments. Thanks for joining in this video. Take care and see you all sometime soon.